question like this, 429 take away 254. Alternative words to take away, subtract or minus, all meaning exactly the same thing. 429 and then 254 back. Again, lots of different options open to us. We could use something like a number line, although the number line would have to be very big for this. But what we're effectively doing is starting at 429 on a number line and then going 254 jumps back down the number line. Practically speaking, though, we're probably going to fall back on one of realistically two different methods. There are many more than this, but these are the two that we're going to have a quick look at. The first option open to us is to start with the 429. We have to start with the 429 because that is the one that's first in the subtract. We are starting at 429 and then we are going 254 back. It is a misconception to say that we are starting with the 429 because it's the bigger one. We are not starting with 429 because it's the bigger one. We are starting at 429 because it's there first. It's the one that's first in the question, so we have to start with that one. With the adding, it doesn't matter. 3 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 3. Different start points, but the jumps are also different. Here it does matter. The order in a subtract question does matter. So we start with the 429. We could then take away chunks of the other number. Rather than try and take away 254 in one go, we could go back 200 jumps first of all. And 429 take away 200, well 429, 100 less would be 329, another 100 less, 229. We could then go back from the 229, we could go 50 less. That 5 there in the 254 is a 50. So 50 less, count backwards in 10s perhaps. 229, 219, 209, 199. 189, 179. And then we could go back from 179, four units, take away the four, would be 179, 78, 77, 76, 75. 175 there for our answer overall. All of this, of course, is assuming that we are not using a calculator. If we did have access to a calculator and this came up as part of a question, we could simply put the numbers in our calculator and press equals. Now, the second and perhaps more commonly used option open to us would be to use the column subtraction, the hundreds, tens and units grid again. And again, this is perhaps quite traditional unexpectedly so given how much I like using alternative methods but again this is quite a useful thing if we can get our heads around it. The problem with it tends to come from the fact that it's not often explained why certain steps in the process work. So the first thing we do we set up our numbers in the grid. When we get to those kind of difficult steps we'll explain how they work and hopefully that will make the whole method a little bit clearer. So we set things up in the grid 429 and 254. We could put our hundreds, tens and units column headers at the top if we wanted to, just to make sure everything lined up properly. We don't have to, that's personal preference. But we do have to make sure that the numbers themselves line up, 429 and 254 in the correct columns. 429, 254, everything's fine. I'm going to put my answer line there and I'm going to put the subtract symbol in there to remind me what it is that I'm doing. And I'm going to work through these columns, starting with the smallest, in much the same way that we did with the column addition. But we're going to be subtracting this time, taking away instead. So we're going to start with the units, because that's the smallest column. We've got nine units, and we're taking away four units. Well, that's nine, take away four, would leave us with five units. And everything's good so far. Then we come to the tens, and we've got two tens, take away five tens. Well, two tens, take away five tens. Well, we can't do because we haven't got enough tens here. We have a problem. And yet there isn't an issue with the question because 429 take away 254, that's very easily done. It is possible to do that. We know that that is 175. We know that if we put that in our calculator, it would work. We've done it already. 
on the previous method. So it must work here. Let's think about what we've already got. Now the problem, as it stands, is that we haven't got enough tens here. Now the obvious solution to not having enough of something is to try and get more. So if the problem is we haven't got enough tens, the solution we're going to work towards is to get some more. Now to work out where to get some from, we have to think about what these numbers mean. Let's have a look at the 400. We've got 400s. Now we haven't got enough tens, so we need to get some from somewhere. And this is the clever bit. What if I keep three of those hundreds as they are? They just stay as three hundreds, perfectly fine. And what if that other hundred, that fourth hundred, what if I swap that for some stuff? What if I swap that one hundred rather than being 100, what if I swap that for some tens? How many tens would I get from that 100? Well, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I would get 10 tens from that 100. So we had 400s, and I've swapped the 400s for 300s and 10 tens. It's a little bit like going into a shop with a 100 pound note and saying, hello, shopkeeper, can I give you one of my 100 pound notes and you give me 10, 10 pound notes in return and the shopkeeper does that. Your other 300s, they're safely tucked away in your back pocket, but the one that you've swapped, you've got 10 tens and that's okay because you've got the same amount of money. You've changed the way it looks You've changed the actual notes that you have, but you've still kept the same amount of money. And that's the key thing. You have swapped one of the hundreds for some tens, so that you've still got the same amount, you've still got all the same information there, it's just written differently. And now we've done that swap, we can transfer this information back into the original diagram. We had 400s. We don't have 400s anymore. We only have three. I'm going to cross out the four and make that three instead. We don't have 400s anymore. We only have three because the other one we swapped for some tens. How many tens did we swap it for? We swapped it for 10 because 10 tens make up that hundred. How many tens did we have originally? We had two. So we now have two plus the 10 that we've just gained is 12 tens. So we don't have two tens anymore. We have 12. The problem was that we didn't have enough tens. The solution was to get some more. Have we got some more? Yes, we have because we've swapped one of the hundreds for some tens. We now have 12 tens take away five tens. That's very possible to do. 12 tens take away five tens is seven tens. And then in the hundreds column, we now have three hundreds there, not four, because remember we use one of those. We have three hundreds, we're taking away two hundreds, and that leaves us with just one hundred overall. And a final answer, once again, of one hundred and seventy-five. We'll do one more of these questions just to reinforce this swapping idea. It's worth saying you're not necessarily going to have to do this every time. Sometimes with the column subtraction it will just work nicely and you won't have to do any of this swapping stuff, this fancy stuff. It will just neatly work and all the columns will be absolutely fine. 
First thing with any column subtraction, if that's what we're going to do, we're going to line them up in the hundreds, tens and units. 6, 5, 3, take away 2, 1, 8. As long as they're lined up, it doesn't matter how big the different numbers are. If one is much bigger than the other, that's absolutely fine. As long as we have the first one on the top and the second one on the bottom and everything lined up in the correct columns. With this particular example, again, the numbers happen to be the same size. They are both hundreds numbers. So we're going to start with the smallest value column, which is the units. We've got three units take away eight units and immediately we've got a problem because if I've got three and I'm trying to take away eight of those, we can't do. The problem is that we haven't got enough units to take the eight away. And if the problem is that we haven't got enough, the solution must be to get more. Now, where am I going to get those more from? Well, the only place I could look, well, there's a couple of places I could look, but realistically, the most sensible place to look would be the next column up. Because we currently have five tens and three units. The problem is we need some more units. Now these units are a little bit like having pound coins. We've got three pound coins and we've got five ten pound notes and we need to get some more pound coins. Where are we going to get those pound coins from? Well we're going to get them from swapping one of the tens. So I go into a shop I keep four of my £10 notes in my back pocket and the other one, the fifth one, I hand to the shopkeeper and I say, shopkeeper, could you possibly swap this £10 note for some pound coins so that you don't gain any money from me and I don't gain any money from you so that we have the same amount of money that we both started with so that I still keep my five tens and three units but in a different form, in a different currency and the shopkeeper says, yes, of course. So you give them the £10 note and you no longer have five tens, you have four tens. But with the £10 note that you've handed over, you are now £10 at a loss. So they have to give you £10 worth of stuff back. So they give you £10 coins or 10 units. The five tens, you keep four of them as they are, and then the other one swaps for ten units. Which means we now have a total of four tens and three plus the ten we've just gained is thirteen units. The problem was that we didn't have enough units. The solution was to get some more. We've just got some more. Now what we have to do is we have to transfer this information back into the diagram. We used to have five tens. We don't anymore. We only have four ten pound notes left. We only have four. I'm going to cross the five out and write four instead. We used to just have three units, but then we gained ten more from doing that swap, from swapping that extra ten. We swapped it for ten units and we gained 13 units. So now in this question, when we look at it again, we can look at the units. We've got 13 units and we're taking away eight units. And 13 units take away eight units is five units and everything is fine with that column. Next thing, four tens take away one ten, three tens and six hundreds take away two hundreds, four hundreds and six hundred and fifty three take away two hundred and eighteen is four hundred and thirty five. As with most questions, it's worth checking whether that answer seems sensible. Well, 650 take away about 200 will be about 450. This seems kind of reasonable. It's within the right kind of size that we're expecting. Now, you may recognise the process that we've just undergone. If you are at all familiar with the column subtraction, you will hopefully recognise that we haven't done anything different from the normal method here. If I were to cover this up, in particular and just look at the question that looks very much like the normal method but what we've done is we've explained what happens we've explained why we are crossing some stuff out and writing extra numbers in we have explained the process that is traditionally called and this is the only time i'm going to use this word this year traditionally called borrowing but the problem with that word that I have is that that word does not actually explain what's going on here at no point are we borrowing anything borrowing suggests we're going to give something back 
we borrow something, we're expecting to return it. And yeah, okay, we take one of these tens, or we take one of the hundreds in the previous example, and we swap it for some stuff, we do something with it, but we don't give it back. Which means we are not borrowing anything. What we are instead doing here, once again, is we are swapping. We take one of those tens in this case, hundreds in the previous example, we take one of those and we swap it for some of the smaller value stuff that we need because we don't give it back. So the method hasn't changed, but the wording and the explanation are hopefully a little bit more clear. Now again, with the subtracting, much like the adding, you are welcome to use any method that you are comfortable with. If you achieve the right answer, I don't really care what method you use. But the advantages, as with the adding, the advantages of the column subtraction is that we can use this for any numbers at all. We can use it for decimals, big numbers, small numbers, it doesn't matter as long as everything is lined up properly. This sort of stuff still works for any question at all. We just swap if we need to, because again, we might not. If we need to, we swap one of the next column up for what we need. The worst these questions can get is that you might have to do two swaps in a question. You might have to swap something very big for something a bit smaller and then swap that for what you actually want. But that's kind of the worst these questions can get, that you might have to do more than one swap in a question.